Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the Shawfire Life Conference, the platform God has given us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And all who come to him, he gives the eternal life from God, the Almighty Father. So the aim for every one of us here remains, as we have been saying, to receive the eternal life, to increase in knowledge, application, and manifestation of that eternal life, to be a vessel for God, to teach others, a vessel for God to use and therefore teach others. So our topic today, which is also our teaching series for the month, our topic today is the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. And we can simply say, in short, the name of Jesus. Her glory be to God. Our text is Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Acts of the Apostles, which we have studied in depth and we have uh, discovered that while it is called the Acts of the Apostles, it is actually the Acts of God, hallelujah, in the lives of the apostles and uh, early believers. And those Acts of God remain our Acts or remain the same in our lives today. And so this study is undertaken to further um, enhance our knowledge, our understanding, and hence the manifestation of the acts of God in our own lives, because the acts of God continues today. So our text is Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Let's open our Bible and read it. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. I'll read it again. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. This text uh, is referring to the name of Jesus. The name that is talked about here, that there is salvation in and none other, and that no other name under heaven is given among men by which we must be saved. Emphasis, we must be saved. The name here is referring to the name of Jesus Christ. Many people pray and ask in the name of Jesus, but receive no answer. <laughs> For many, the name of Jesus has become a routine in their mouth, a convenient exclamation of sorts, and a conjuration when in shock or fear. I take that again. I say for many, the name of Jesus has become a routine in their mouth. mouth. It has become a convenient exclamation. It has become a conjuration when they are in shock or in fear. Why do some people call the name and even pray in the name, but nothing happens? Why? What has God promised us in the name of Jesus Christ? How shall we see and manifest and enjoy the power, salvation, and blessings packed in the name of Jesus Christ in our lives. Maybe you have more questions concerning the name of Jesus Christ. This topic that we want to study, these questions and many more form the goal of what we want to address in this study and teaching series so that we will enjoy the fullness of God through Christ Jesus, as God has provided for us. 
Like Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10b, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Brothers and sisters, it is our portion to enjoy the fullness of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. As I pray that the Holy Spirit opens our understanding in the name of Jesus Christ, that in this study, to start with James chapter four, verse three, James chapter four, verse three, says you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. James chapter four, verse three. Brothers and sisters, there is a right way and a wrong way to ask. We want to learn the right way. I remember a man, a, a, a carpenter that I invited to do work in my house a long time ago. Uh, still, while I was in uh, my corporate profession, um, I brought the man to do work in my house. And I told him to do some moderate work, functional uh, work that I, I needed. And the man looked at me, looked at the house I was living in. And he said to me, ah, if I were in your position, I would have done uh, something more than this. Not only him. I've had many people make those kind of remarks. If I were in your position. And when the man said that, and as often, I will remember the proverb that they say, God does not give <laughs> a wild animal, is in my own language, horn. Because if they had horn, plus the teeth that they have, Oh, what would they have done to human beings? So brothers and sisters, when people make those remarks, you wonder when they will ever get to that position they're dreaming of. Why don't they get there? Because their attitude towards it is wrong. They may never discover the way to that position that they so desire because their attitude is wrong. This is similar to what James chapter four, verse three is telling us, you ask amiss. Oh, the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us how to ask. And so by the Holy Spirit grace, we have learned important principle of the Bible. We spend time learning studying the synoptic gospels and the book of acts and so the holy spirit has helped us to learn important principle of the bible and i want to again remind you keep these keys keep this principle so we learned that the synoptic gospels set out the principles of god god's will and god's kingdom so if you want to discover the principles of god god's will and god's kingdom go to the Synoptic Gospels and study. So the Synoptic Gospels set out the principles of God, God's will, and God's kingdom. And the book of Acts, hallelujah, as we just mentioned, where our text is coming from, shows us the practice and demonstration, the proof, the infallible proof of these keys, of these principles of God and of God's kingdom and of God's will that are set out in the synoptic gospel. So in the book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, a principle, all these principles are set out there. So let us read Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I will just take it. He said, Jesus was the one speaking here to the disciples and specifically to Peter. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever 
you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. As we go on in this study, we will have opportunity to read other translations and explain this uh, uh, scripture more. But I know I have explained some part, uh, or I've explained it in the past to those who have been uh, listening, following our teaching. But let me just highlight the key here, the key point here around the keys of the kingdom. So Jesus was the one speaking to Peter and the rest of the disciples. You remember this? He, Jesus made this statement after he had asked the disciples that were with him. He said, who do men say that I am? And they made mention, they said, they say, you're, the pro you're a prophet, you are Elijah, you know. And Jesus said, and who do you say? You yourself, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So Jesus went on and told Peter, made this statement that we are reading in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I'll read it again. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Beloved, the keys refers to the principles or, and the laws governing the operations of the kingdom of heaven. The keys here, if you put it in quotation uh, mark, refers to the principles or the laws governing the operations of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. The name of Jesus Christ is one of such keys. But you need to know how to use it. You need to know how to operationalize it to fully enjoy the power, the salvation, the blessings of God that are packed in that name. Our text that we read, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the full reading of it should actually be taken from Acts chapter 4, verse 8. So let's read it together, Acts chapter 4, verse 8 to that 12, so we get the full context. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers, of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man, stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you, builders, which has become the chief on a stone. Verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus Christ. Oh, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The name of Jesus Christ is one of such keys. And we are here to learn. We are here to know how to operationalize the provisions of God in this name. From this text that we have read, brothers and sisters, you can see that the Holy Spirit is involved in the operationalization of this name. You can see that good deeds is involved. Faith is involved. Accepting Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection is involved. Knowing the authority and salvation in his name is involved. And so many others. Peter said, let it be known to you in verse 10. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel, 
that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucify, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. Earlier on in the same Acts chapter 3, verse 12, also verse 16, Peter earlier said in verse 12, he says, so when Peter saw, saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Why do you marvel? A man over 40 years old, a cripple, has just been healed by the name of Jesus in the mouth of Peter. And people marvel. And Peter answering them. In verse 12 says, so when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us? At me and the other apostles, James and John, who were with him. Why do you look so intently at us? as though by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk. Verse 16, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The faith which comes through him, through Jesus Christ, has given him, this man who was a cripple before, this perfect soundness. Oh, this name makes all things perfect. Glory be to God. Has given him this perfect soundness. And he will give you this perfect soundness. He will give me this perfect soundness. But we have to learn. We have to understand the keys of the kingdom of heaven. In the presence of you all, glory be to God. So, the name of Jesus in the mouth of Peter healed the cripple. The name of Jesus in the mouth of Peter caught many who listened to him to their heart, and they began to ask him in Acts chapter 2, verse 37. He said, Now, when they heard this, they were caught to their to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? He brought the name of Jesus, brought many to salvation. But let me show us something on the contrary, which is why we have raised those questions. Why do people call the name? But nothing happens. Many pray in the name. And they don't receive. James 4.3 gives us a hint of that. And Matthew chapter 16 verse 19 gives us a hint of the way out. The principles of the kingdom of God. In the book of Acts, the same Acts chapter 19 from verse 13 to 17, Acts 19, 13 to 17, you know the scripture. There, the Bible says, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus. Because just like we said that for many, the name has become a routine in their mouth, a convenient thing, a convenient exclamation of sort, and a conjuration when they are in shock and fear. And so these itinerant exorcists who were Jews as well, took it upon themselves to call on the name of Jesus Christ. But they were badly beaten and scattered. Why? Why were they badly beaten and scattered? 
according to this Acts chapter 19, verses 13 through 17, which you know, you read it. They were scattered, they were beaten, but they called on this name. This name by which we must receive salvation. For there is salvation in none other except the name of Jesus. Why? Beloved brothers and sisters, this makes it abundantly clear to us that there are keys of the kingdom of heaven. There are keys of the kingdom of heaven. The name of Jesus Christ is one of such keys, as we have earlier said. It is indeed the key above all keys. Hallelujah. It is the universal key. The name of Jesus is the master identity card, is the master key, hallelujah, that God has given to us to open the blessings of heaven, to open the power of heaven, to open the salvation, the doors unto us. By the grace of God, brothers and sisters, we shall be exploring this key. We shall be exploring these principles to tap into this power, this salvation, and these blessings of God that are meant for us, that are packed in the name of Jesus. That's what this story, study series is about. Brothers and sisters, as we always take and I always emphasize that if you want to learn something deeply, ask yourself the what, the why, and the how. That's what we're adopting here already. And so this has been the introduction to this study. And we have raised a number of questions. Maybe you have questions to raise as well. I shall be listening to those questions that you have to raise. In addition to the questions we have raised, why do some people call the name and even pray in the name, but nothing happened? What has God promised us in the name of Jesus Christ? How shall we see and enjoy the power, the salvation, and the blessings that are so loaded in this name. What other questions do you have to ask? We'll be going into the discussion to hear your questions. And so we will discuss the what, the why, the how of this name. So we will come to the fullness and the manifestation of the power in that name. And so brothers and sisters, make it a duty to join all the series. I believe you're excited as I am excited about this study series because this is about handing you, handing me, handing us the principles to operationalize the kingdom of heaven. But let us start by what Acts chapter 2, which we already, we, we saw there, that Acts chapter 2 that we read, because the key starts with repentance, as we uh, also saw. Acts chapter 2, from that verse 37, Remember, we read 37, we are 38 and 39. Now, when they heard these, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent. And let every one of you 
Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. It is always in the name of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. And so, are you here and you want to give your life to Jesus? Because that's the starting point. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's the starting point. Will you receive this Jesus? Will you accept him? That you may come to this fullness of the power, the salvation, the blessing in the name of Jesus. Those exorcists were Jewish just like Paul was. And they thought, oh, it was just ordinary. Call the name. As many would always say, there is no other name except the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Oh, yes, that's very true. But same Jewish people like Paul, they took upon themselves to call on this name. They were beaten and they were scattered because they have not come into the name. They have not accepted the name and received the name. So the starting point is repentance. If you would like to give your life to Jesus now, to start this journey as we go on this teaching, without any doubt, any assumption, I know that the power of God will manifest in your life, will manifest in my life. And even right now, that power will transform your life. Or maybe you have given your life to Jesus. You are one of those who speak in tongues, and as soon as you finish speaking, you jump on the bed of fornication and adultery. You are one of those who say, I am born again, but there is no love in your heart. You are a dangerous hypocrite. But today, the name of Jesus will save you. The power in the name of Jesus will transform your life. You have to be willing and sincere. So you can undertake this trip, undertake this journey, this exploration of the power, the blessing, the salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, let us pray together. Tell, let's pray together. Just like Peter said, repent. Repent in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. So go ahead and tell you, Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins. I confess with my own mouth that I am a sinner and Jesus Christ has died for my sins. And so I repent of my sins, I reject and I forsake all my sins. Now I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I come to you, Almighty God, and I ask, forgive me all my sins and wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. Make me whole now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, break the power of sin, whatever power of sin, addiction, has plagued my life. Father, now break that power in the name of Jesus. I reject sin. I reject Satan, the author of sin. I reject the world and all the attractions, the lures, the lusts of the world. I give my life to Jesus Christ. I give my life to you, almighty God. Heavenly Father, take my life and make me what you created me to be. From today, let my life please you. Let my life glorify you. Let my life honor you. Please send your Holy Spirit now to me. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, I open my heart to you, my body, my soul, my spirit. Feel me everywhere. Make me your temple, your dwelling place, the temple of God, and reveal the power in the name of Jesus to me and in my life. In Jesus' name, 
I have prayed. You say so. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' name, we have prayed and agreed. Amen. Well, our brothers and sisters, now, what are your own questions we want to discuss? But before we do that, I just feel like praying for every one of us right now. I just feel for every one of us to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in that name. There is power. There is healing. There is mercy. There is mercy. Oh, if you had joined us on Wednesday, please don't miss Wednesday prayer. There is mercy in the name of Jesus. Mercy turns what was supposed to be negative to positive. Hallelujah. It turns the woman that was supposed to be stoned because she was involved in adultery to receive favor of God. Mercy. Mercy prevails over judgment. And so Peter here said in that Acts chapter 3, rather verse 12, he said, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? 16, and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Go ahead and tell him. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, direct. Show me mercy now. Show me mercy and answer my prayers. Go ahead and ask. Go ahead and ask whatever you desire when you pray. It shall be done for you in the name of Jesus. You go ahead and ask. Please ask straight. Go ahead and ask. And I will just agree with you in the name of Jesus. And it shall be done. The mercy of God will surround you now. The favor of God will overtake you now. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. And so I agree with you. That what you have asked God in the name of Jesus, so let it be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It is done in Jesus' name, amen. So let's listen to your own questions now. What are your questions? What are your discussion and contribution to this introductory study? The name of Jesus. Yes, Sonny, go ahead. Please, uh, my question is, uh, uh, that question, I will actually put it to myself. Because uh, the, in the book of Acts that you, you read, and Acts chapter 4, verse 12, I think that Acts chapter 4, verse 12 is in line with um, John 14, verse 6. The Christ talked about the fact that uh, he is the only way to the Father, and that no one can go to the Father except by him. Now, my question is, we have a lot of uh, uh, believing system, what I may call religion, uh, that is outside Christianity. Now, my question is, what is the fate of these people that do not believe in Jesus Christ? Because I listened to uh, a kind of uh, discussion between one of the world's uh, richest man, uh, men in the world with the pastor. The pastor asked him to give his life to Jesus Christ. He said that he's not ready to do that. That is, he's sure that so many people are going to hell. So he wants to join them there. So I'm asking, what will be the fate of these people that do not have Jesus and do not believe in his name as the son of God? Because Christ's statement here is very, there's nothing like, he's not playing with what he's saying. He said, nobody can go to the Father except by him. So is there any other way that anybody can actually go to meet God or have access to God after this life that we are living and even in the present world? Because it seems Christ is very serious about what he's saying here. So I want to ask, is what will be the fate of these people, please? Thank you, uh, Brother Sonny. 
Um, Bradara, your line is open again. You want to speak? Yes, yes. When you were teaching, you said that uh, it is the name of Jesus in the mouth of the Apostle Peter that made the man whole, that made that man to be able to stand up and walk. I actually want you to put through more light to that. You know, when you made that statement, it rang a bell in my head. I've not really seen it that way. I want you to put more light to that, put more perspective to that. Sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Sonny, yours is uh, simple because you've actually told us a very clear story that the man said he knows many people will go to hell and he is ready to go to hell. That's his own, he is decided. But you've also made the point, which is the same scripture we always uh, use because that's the uh, foundation uh, vision of this platform. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by me. And the scripture we have also used today because we must stand by the word of God, right? And the word of God is true. Uh, today, uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, which you have seen. Nor is there salvation in any order, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, um, Rather than question, I take a very, very good point, really. But I'm, my point is that you've indeed said it all. You've indeed said it all. So I, I join you to emphasize the point that you have already made, that there are no other ways. That's why we tell all men. And knowing that God has given a conscience to man and a witness in our spirit and in our heart. Anybody that is not right with God knows he is not right with God. And anybody who is right with God knows he is right with God. And it is only through Jesus Christ you can have that confidence that you are right with God. Because Romans chapter 8, just to add to the scriptures you have mentioned. Romans chapter 8, look at that. Let's look at it again. Let's start from verse 15 and 16. Uh, it says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. 16, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So when you come to Jesus, when anyone comes to Jesus, repents by the name of Jesus, he is saved accepts Jesus, gives his life to Jesus, and repents of his sin, as we have just done, praying, and believe God, and continues to walk in the way of God. He is saved, and the Spirit of God is given to him. That Spirit, through Jesus Christ, bears witness with our spirit, bears witness with that man. So like the man you said, uh, said he is going to hell, he knows he's, he's all right with God, that is his way. And that the one who has given his life to Jesus, who has the witness by the Spirit of God, is also fully confident that he is right with God. Just like Paul uh, said, I have finished my race, I have kept the faith. And he said, now remains for me the crown of righteousness that the Lord will give to me, give to me at his uh, coming and at the resurrection. Now, there is a subtle part of your question, which I would leave for another time. And that is all around where do those who are in Christ spend their life, whether after this world. So I, I don't want to, us to shy away from it. And where do those who are outside Christ, spend their life after this life. We'll come to talk about that, but suffice it to say, as simple as Jesus put it in John chapter uh, 3, verse 16, which we are all very familiar with. It says, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So those who are in Christ have everlasting life. This eternal life that we're talking about, they will live forever. Though they may die in this physical world and sleep and rest, that's why we say rest in peace. People are resting in God. There will be a resurrection in Jesus Christ. We know that. And they will resurrect in Christ and they will live forever. And those who are not in Christ will perish. There is no meaning of word about it. So you say, what is their end? Their end is that they will perish. And what would that perish, perishing be? The Bible talks about a place of torment at the, after the judgment where the devil will be put into. And those who followed, who are not in Christ, who are not following God, it means they are, in, uh, they are following the devil. There is, the, 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 there is no in between. You know, there is no other place. It's either you are in, in Christ and in God, or you are not in Christ and in God, and that means you're in the way of the devil. And so where the devil will end up there, they will also end up. There is no meaning of words about that. And we'll come to, again, study that in detail, but I hope this suffice to answer your question. Um, then talking about the name of Jesus in the mouth of Peter. Uh, brother, I think the best way to address that at this point, because these are the things we'll be studying, is to just quickly again contrast it with Acts chapter 19, the name of Jesus in the mouth of the exorcists. So that's it. So, and you can even see the name of Jesus in the mouth of Paul in that same Acts chapter 19. And which made the exorcists to now say, okay, Peter calls on the name of Jesus and things happen. Paul calls on the name of Jesus and things happen. So that's it. I call on the name of Jesus. And they also called on the name of Jesus. But instead of something happening, they were beaten and scattered. Acts chapter 19. So. Uh, it, what makes the difference? That's what we'll be exploring. So it is not just assuming that I will call, once I call on this name, have you become part of the name? What are the principles of the kingdom of heaven in this name that you must know? And therefore, have faith in God and in the name. Just like Peter said, he said it is through faith in the name. That's uh, what I meant by that. So the name of Jesus in the mouth of Peter and Paul, uh, in Philip, uh, the mouth of Stephen, and the mouth of believers is different from the name of Jesus in the mouth of one that does not believe. So. The scripture there said, uh, Acts chapter 19 from 13. Then some of the itinerant Jewish sources took, up, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the name, or we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so, 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Can you see that? And Paul, I know. But who are you? So that again tells us that there is an identity required in calling this name. We will come to talk about this. Then the man in whom the evil spirit was, was lived on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. That's what I meant by 
being beaten and scattered because you have no identity in that name. And therefore, you cannot enjoy the power, the blessing, the salvation that is in the name. Any other contribution before we round it off? Yes, Sister Comfort, please go ahead. <laughs> Pastor, thank you so much for thank the you. explanation of uh, the question from Brother Tara. I think um, <clears throat> in our study of uh, the Bible, uh, Second Corinthians, since I started reading Second uh, Corinthians chapter two, Verses 14, each time I go away, my spirit would take me back. I'm sorry to go far yeah, yeah. to that 14. Oh. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captive. That is in my own translation, NIV. And some say the victory parade and procession. Mm. Okay. Who always leads us as captives in Christ, triumphal procession, and uses us to spread the aroma of knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and the one we are an aroma that brings death yes. to the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know, maybe I jumped. So I, I think it's 14, that was the, my the anchor's uh, verse. So the spirit, spirit keeps on showing me what that scripture means. And finally, I think today in my, meditation this I, I i i found something which i read and i was i had wanted to send it to you and others he said christ alone is accepted before god yes through faith in christ's perfect work of atonement the christians is justified and incorporated into him to be in Christ is not merely to be within the sphere of his influence, but is to be really in him. There is no context for redemption apart from this mystery. So what I did derive from here, I, it is not us that is doing the work. That is what it means. It is Christ that is doing the work. It is the only Christ that is acceptable or uh, is accepted by God mm -hmm. in the presence of God, mm -hmm. who is interceding for us. Mm -hmm. So if we are into him, if we have brought our life to the extent that we are in Christ, Christ mm -hmm. does it for us. That was the joy I, I got and it had been so revealing. I'm not Amen. the one doing it. It Amen. is Christ that is doing it. The Holy Spirit is the one perfecting it. It is God that called us in Christ with the Holy Spirit. The work is done. So how do I bring my life, like you have said, to this level that Christ will do it for me by Amen. mentioning, in fact, there was something that happened and they told me, say Christ. And I said, the fire that came out from this mouth, from the mouth of this one, be quenched and the light shines and I pass. So it became so, so amazing that the name of, it's not people saying God is three in one. Or Jesus is God. Jesus is a fan. Do you understand what it means? It is God like that. Paul said, thanks be to God. It is the grace and the mercy 
of God that has given us Christ. And he makes us, and I read this triumphal procession. He said, can you imagine Christ is the one who had won this war, the victor, the one leading in this procession. Okay. okay. Well, and well. we are marching to God. All right. So, All right. The point okay. is made. Yeah. Uh, the point is made. Thank you very much, Sister Comfort, for that contribution. Um, thank you. Thank you. Our, uh, so this is the study. The, it is opened now. Um, what you can take from what Sister Comfort has shared, again, is the fact that you you do have work to do <laughs> she has come to that revelation and realization by the study and the time of meditation she has spent to come there so at least realize that so uh, um it's christ who does the work there is the side of knowledge and that's what this is about if you don't know you may have everything but you may never get the benefit of it, right? Galatians chapter four reminds us again and says that, that it says the hair, the hair, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a servant or a slave, though he is master of all. The hair, so we are hairs, like Romans chapter eight has said, joint hairs with Christ Jesus. Yet, if you remain a child, a child doesn't know his right. A child is not disciplined. It doesn't pursue the hard things. Child wants to play. There are many things. As long as the hair is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, though his hair is the owner of everything. Yeah. So thank you, Sister Comfort, for that contribution. Um, it's Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 that I've just referred to. We want to close here. So I believe. We are all looking forward to this study, to discovering. I'm looking forward to discovering. So do the study, the blessing, the salvation, the power, the provision of God in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus in your mouth and in my mouth must produce the result like it did in the mouth of Peter and Paul and the rest of the uh, apostles and disciples in Acts. For the Acts of God continues with us today. In the name of Jesus. So, we want to close. Let us pray. Let us thank God for this word that we have heard. And ask him, Heavenly Father, Pour your spirit upon us afresh and teach us by your spirit your truth. Let the blessing, the power, the salvation in the name of Jesus be ours and manifest in us and through us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's bring our prayer to a close. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for the word you've taught us. Lord, we return all glory to you. Thank you for the souls you have saved and you will continue to save using this word, using this platform. Heavenly Father, we yield ourselves to you. We ask that you continue to glorify your name in our lives and let our lives please you. And Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, may we always do your will, do the will of the Father, do that which pleases you. Thank you, our Lord and our God, for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.